Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Stats All Day with Dr. O'Day. Today we're going to be talking about APA tables for a one-way ANOVA and how to create those. So if you've ever been like me, you've been in the situation where you run a one-way ANOVA. And by the way, in this particular study, the one-way ANOVA that I'm doing is we're examining attitudes toward COVID-19 in our participants. And we ask them questions about themselves, about their family, and in a neutral control condition where we didn't specify if they were answering for themselves or for them, their family. And what we predicted is that people would have more extreme opinions about COVID-19 when they were responding for their family because people generally care more about their family than they do about themselves. So what I did was I put condition in as my grouping variable and I've got six dependent variables. I've got safety compliance, panic about COVID-19, education about COVID-19, negative affect, and perseverance and concern about COVID-19. So I'm going to put those in as my dependent variables and what we're going to see is this is a lot of ANOVAs especially because of the fact that I'm going to have to talk about the means and the standard deviations of all of these different things here and not only that if it's a significant effective condition, which we're seeing in most cases there is a significant effective condition, I'm going to have to probe that effect using two key post hoc comparisons. And by the way, if any of this is unclear to you on why I'm doing these things, please take a look at my videos on running one-way ANOVAs and then come back to this video. But the situation that I've come into play a lot of different times is this is a lot to put into a results section. If I was to write about this for each of these dependent variables, I would say, I hypothesize that there would be a significant effect of condition on safety compliance. Consistent with that hypothesis, I found that there was a significant effect of condition on safety compliance, and I would report this F value, the degrees of freedom, and the P value, and I would also probably even ask, and I could find my partial eta squared value, as well on that. So that's a lot of information to report just already. And if it's significant, then what I would have to do is I would have to then probe this effect using two key post hoc comparisons where I then examine did neutral significantly differ from, differ from self, did neutral significantly differ from family, and did self significantly differ from family. So as I write about all of that stuff, I'd have to give the means, the standard deviations, and these p-values all in text. And that's obnoxious, it's way too much, this would be six gigantic paragraphs. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a table. And to make a table in APA format, what we're going to do is we first have to decide how many rows and columns we're going to need in this table. So if we think about this, we're going to need one row for my title. I'm going to need one row to designate condition. I'm going to need one row for the means and standard deviations. I'm going to need one row per dependent variable. And I'm going to need one row for my note. Because I'm going to put a note at the bottom of the table to explain what's in it. So really what I've got in this situation, because I had six dependent variables, so I'm going to put equals six here, I've got one, two, three, nine, ten total rows in the table that I'm creating. So I've got ten total rows in the table that I'm creating. Now I need to think through how many columns I need. So I need one column to designate the dependent variable. Then I need one column for mean and standard deviation for each of my conditions. So I have three conditions, each needing to report mean and standard deviation equals six total columns. So when you add this one column to designate the dependent variable to six columns to designate all of my means and standard deviations, I'm going to need six total columns. So I'm going to need a table that's 10 rows by seven total columns. 
So let me now get rid of all of this and add in that table. So insert, I'm going to need 10 rows and seven columns. So in this first one, I'm just going to put table one or table two, wherever you are in your manuscript. Then I'm going to put a table title and that's something like main standard deviations, etc. Then I'm going to skip a box right here. I'll tell you why here in just a second. And I'm going to put dependent variable. Then I'm going to put dependent variable one, which is safety compliance. Then I'm going to do panic. Then I'm going to do education. Then I'm going to do negative affect. Then I'm going to do perseverance. Then I'm going to do concern and then I'm going to add a note. And you'll notice that I italicized the note. So next what I need to do is I need to report my three conditions here. So condition one is going to be neutral and that was the control condition. Then condition two is self and then condition three is family. Underneath each of those I need to specify that I'm going to be reporting the mean and I'm going to be reporting the standard deviation and I'm going to copy those underneath the self and underneath the family. Next all I need to do is I need to fill this table out so it's going to be so I'm going to come back after I've filled this out with the means and standard deviations so that we can check that out here in just a second. Okay so now I have filled out this table with my means and standard deviations However, the table, while it is now giving me quite a bit of information, I no longer need to report all of those in text, let's make it a little bit more informative. So what I could do is I could say in the note here, means in a row not sharing subscripts are significantly different from one another. So if I come back over here to Jamovi, we look at my two key post hoc comparisons. And I'm going to start with safety compliance, which was the first row in that table. So here we're seeing that the neutral is not significantly different from the self. Now when we're writing in these subscripts, we always start with subscript A. And my note here says that if the means share subscripts, they're not significantly different. If they don't share subscripts, they are significantly different. So I just said that my neutral and self were not significantly different, so they're going to share a subscript. So I'm going to put an A right there. Now if we look back, we have neutral versus family. Well, that is not significantly different either. So I'm going to go ahead and put an A on family. However, family is significantly different from self, and this presents a little bit of a problem because family and self are currently sharing subscripts. So now I need to think of a way that neutral and self will still share a subscript, neutral and family will still share a subscript, but family and self will not share a subscript. So what I can do is I can actually add a B here. And I can put an A there, but then I can change this family one to subscript B. And what this indicates is there is not a significant difference between neutral and self because they share a subscript A. There is not a significant difference between neutral and family because they share a subscript B. And there is, not, there is a significant difference between self and family because they do not share a subscript. And this is how we illustrate these. So let's go through one more example. So here the neutral and self do not significantly differ but the neutral and family do so I'm going to start again always starting with subscript A on neutral and we said that neutral and self did not significantly differ from one another so I'm going to go ahead and add an A there but in this case family does significantly differ from both of the other two so now it's just very simple I put a subscript B right there if we go through one more example here, we've got neutral versus self, that's not significantly different. Neutral versus family is not significantly different, but family is significantly different from self there. And we're looking at those p-values. So this one's going to be the exact same as the first one, where neutral is not significantly different from either of the other two, 
but self is significantly different from family. So now I'm going to go ahead and fill out the rest of those subscripts. I'll pause the video and I'll be right back. So now I've filled out the rest of those subscripts. You'll notice if you look at these, if you pause the video and look at them, they actually followed pretty similar trends where every now and then um, neutral and self were not different, but they were different from the family. However, in other situations, the neutral and family weren't always different. This last one, though, concern actually presented a little bit of a different effect where none of them were significantly different from one another. So they all got a designation of A. So now we want to think about this table. So now I've presented the means, the standard deviations, and the two key post hoc comparisons. I've now taken a lot of numbers out of my results section, which is going to help the reader a lot. I could stop here and then format it in APA format, but I'm going to actually make this even more informative. I'm someone that I like tables. I like making tables as informative as possible. So I'm going to come up here to table layout and I'm going to insert three more columns to the left. And in these columns, I'm going to go ahead and put my F statistics for that omnibus F test. And what this F is going to be is F with two between groups degrees of freedom and a variety of residual degrees of freedom or error degrees of freedom. So I need to designate that. So I'm going to put F with two between groups degrees of freedom and 150. And I just do it like this where I say 150 to 152. Um, again, it's not perfect right there. Oh. I had a little bit of typo there, 150, not 105. Then I can give the P value there. So I'm going to put P, and then I'm going to put eta squared partial, which my eta symbol is right here. So I'm going to do squared. I'm going to undo the automatic capitalization of eta, and I'm going to put a partial there. So now I can just copy over those F statistics. So the Fs which I'm getting from my one-way ANOVA right here. I'm going to take 3.07, 18.08. I'm going to do 4.13, 6.41, 6.30, 0 0.81. My p-values are going to be 0 0.049, less than 0 0.001. 0 0.018, 0 0.002, 0 0.002, 0 0.445, 0 .4 and then my a to squared partial values. In order to get those, I hate that Jamovi makes you do this. I'm going to have to run this as a different ANOVA. Um, it's, it's super annoying that Jamovi does that. I apologize, but we're going to have to do these one by one where I put safety compliance in and I ask for partial a to squared which is going to give me right there. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video again, and I'm going to insert all of those. That's how you do it, though. All right, so now I've inserted all of those partial eta squareds, and we now have a table that makes it so that I can report six separate ANOVAs, one-way ANOVAs in text with no numbers. And it's a very simple to read table where we can see, is there a significant effect of safety compliance? Why, yes, there is. And then I can very easily see the means and standard deviations. And by looking at those subscripts, I know which ones are significantly different from which. But now my table's super ugly, so let's make it formatted a little bit better in APA format. So this neutral is going to need to merge across the mean and the standard deviation there. So I'm going to merge those cells. I'm going to merge the self across there. I'm going to merge the family across there. I'm going to merge my title across the whole top of the table. I'm going to merge my note across the whole bottom of the table. And then with APA format, the, the guidelines generally say you want to remove as many of the grid lines here as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this button over here on the top left. And if I double click that, it brings up the table design option. And I'm going to go to border and just say no borders. I don't want any borders right now. Now, APA format wants you to have a border underneath the title. 
It also wants you to have a border before you get to the data, so I'm going to put one under here. Now the other thing that I like to do is I like to add in one more border because I think that it signals that, oh, if it does that, so every now and then it does do that due to those, so you, what you got to do is you just select these ones and I do a top border. So that actually signals that this is neutral mean and standard deviation, this is self mean and standard deviation, family mean and standard deviation. So again, we're pretty good now we got to add one more click into the note and do a top border there we're pretty darn good we're getting a lot closer but this table is still super ugly I've got one more trick up my sleeve if I click on this little button I can right click and do auto fit to contents and bam now we have a beautiful table that accurately and very easily does all of the statistics for you so that now you can just spend about one solid paragraph describing to the reader what they actually want to read. They don't want to read a results section with all of these numbers in it. They just want to read about what the heck happened and then they want to have the table so if they want to reference it, which they should, to look at the size of the effects, they can reference it there. The last thing I like to do is I just like to center all these things. I think it makes it look a lot better, makes it look a lot easier to read. Now we've got a nice APA format table that shows a lot of different ANOVA analyses, and that's how we do it. Well, that's all I have for today. If you'd like to see another help guide on how to make anything in APA format, please let me know. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe, and let me know if you'd like to see anything else coming up. Have a great rest of your day.